What's going on guys? I'm Matt from SB Fishing TV here with Mystery Tackle Box and today we're going to go over a few techniques that I use to find new fishing spots locally. We're going to grab a few of our baits from our Mystery Tackle Box and we're going to go out and catch some bass. So whether you're new to an area or you're just learning how to fish or you just don't really know where to go, you want to find somewhere new, there's a ton of different ways that you can find different places to fish. And the first one I want to share with you guys is very simple, it's Google Maps. So pop that satellite image on, you can see a satellite image of pretty much every area of the United States. It's really cool, you can find so many cool spots like this and you can really kind of have an idea of what you're going to be fishing based on the watercolor and just get a good idea of what you're going to be heading into. Another important thing when you're checking out the Google Maps side of this is you want to find a place that has some sort of cover or something that you can actually be fishing. So if you find a pond <clears throat> that looks completely blank, kind of study that satellite image of it a little bit. See if you can see any underwater trees or any sort of points or water inflows or outflows, whatever it may be. Stuff like that really pays off when you're bank fishing. The one tip I'll give you with the Google map search is make sure that you're actually allowed to be fishing wherever it is that you find. So let's say we find this nice marina here off the Potomac River. It looks like it has plenty of bank access. It has a bunch of docks so we'll have some cover to fish. You want to call the marina and just make sure that you're allowed to be there because you know, you don't want to get yourself in any trouble. That's my biggest tip is just don't step on anybody's toes. So Google Maps is definitely a good one. A second place I would suggest checking is your state's Department of Game and Inland Fisheries website. They're generally going to have a ton of lakes and sometimes some smaller bodies of water like ponds listed on there that you can go fish all publicly as well. And third would be to check out Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, look up any sort of bass fishing groups in your local area. There's tons of groups like that. I'm a part of probably like seven or eight. Everyone on there is really cool and helpful. It's a great community online. And if you're trying to find new places to fish, you will do that. And you also will find some new fishing buddies too. So we're gonna grab some of our baits, head out to some of these spots on the Potomac River that I found, like the Washington Sailing Marina. We're gonna hop up to the Tidal Basin as well. This looks really good. And then we're also going to check out this area here. This is called Roach's Run. So all of these are public fishing areas. And hopefully we can go out and catch some fish on our baits we got in our mystery tackle box. All right, guys, so we just pulled up to our first spot. We're at the Washington Sailing Marina here in Virginia on the Potomac River. I'm going to tie on a couple of these baits that we have. We're going to walk some of these docks, fish the bank, see if we can pick up any fish. Quickly before we get fishing, I want to show you some of these baits that I'm going to be fishing with today. First up, we have the Bagley Twin Spin, which is a topwater, old school style prop bait. I'm going to use this if the light conditions get a little bit lower or if I start seeing fish hit on top. Uh, I'm going to be throwing this probably around on my spinning rod. It's the only thing I have with braid on it, so it's going to keep it up in the water column right on top right where you want it so we're definitely going to throw this once the uh, clouds roll in a little bit thicker next up we have biospawn's vile crawl so this is a great looking crawl style bait really good for punching because it has that nice slender styled body a ton of action in these two crawls here too i'm going to throw this on a texas rig flip it around some of the docks drag it along the bottom see if we can get anything to pick this up i have a good feeling this is going to work it's a great looking bait now the next two are going to be two stick baits, very, very good for bank fishing, just really easy to use and they catch fish hands down, just very, very good fish catching bait. So first up we have Biospawn's Exo Stick and I've fished with this quite a bit. It's a great looking bait, has really nice cone styled shape all the way through its body. I'm going to be throwing this on the flickety split today, just wacky rig it on that weighted jig head and it'll be great. This is definitely going to catch fish, there's no doubt about it. And last but not least, we have a Sluggo by Lunker City. So this is another stick styled bait. Um, this can be rigged so many different ways. I'm probably going to fish this weightless and just fish it similarly to a fluke. Um, but you can throw this on a swim jig head, you can throw this on the back of a chatter bait. There's a lot you can do with this specific bait, but there you go. Those are the baits that I'm working with today. We're going to go hit the water. See if we catch fish. All right guys, so I have three rods rigged up and ready to go with the baits I just showed you. I'm gonna go back later and grab the twin spin. But for now, we're gonna start off uh, fan casting 
the exo stick around a little bit. So when I'm fishing the exo stick on the flickety split, I'm just gonna make a pitch toward the bank, kind of paralleling it or casting it out too. Basically when I'm fishing the bank, I'm fan casting a lot, but I'll let it sink all the way to the bottom and just keep a really close eye on my line because a lot of the times you'll see the bite in the line before you even feel the bite. And then once it gets to the bottom, I'll pop it a few times and let it sink back down. Always keep an eye on your line. A couple little bass right there. Where's your mama? And then once I feel like I work the area pretty good, I kind of work it back like a jerk bait a little bit faster to see if I can get anything to react to it. And I catch a lot of fish like that too, which is pretty cool. Also, you guys don't want to look past these pilings that are out here. Any sort of cover that you can find from the bank is always good. You really want to focus on that. Really target those areas because that's where the fish are going to be hanging out. We're going to walk over here, fish some of these docks a little bit, see what happens. Basically just covering as much water as I can on foot. You know, not spending too much time in one area. We'll find some fish. It's another bank fish tip for you guys. Try to make casts a little bit further out when you're approaching the spot. Sometimes those fish will feel the vibration of you walking. You'd be surprised how many fish you can catch from making longer casts. Oh my god, that was sick! No! Oh, dang it, dang it, dang it. That fish chased it up. I wouldn't say spot number one was a bust. We did miss that three and a half ish pounder, but we're gonna bust out the Google Maps on the phone. We're gonna see where we're gonna go next. All right, guys, well, we made it to the second spot of the day. We're at the Tidal Basin here in Washington, D.C. It's really cool because this is literally exactly what it sounds like, a Tidal Basin. So on the other side of this, we have the Potomac River, and then the current comes in through this bridge in and out every day, twice a day. So there's a ton of fish that hang out in this exact spot. Texas rig, file crawl. Drag this around, make some fan casts, see what happens. All right, guys, so we've thrown around the vile crawl, we've thrown the exo stick and the sluggo. We're gonna switch it up. We're gonna try a little bit of top water. There's so many fish breaking on the surface. We'll see what happens. We're gonna try out the Berkeley twin spin, see if we can't get one to bite. So when you're fishing the Sunny B twin spin, you really just wanna reel this slowly back to the boat. I like to give it a few pauses here and there as well. But this is a nice, subtle top water that these fish should be crushing right now. Another thing about top water is you definitely want to keep it on and try it throughout the day. Like if you get a bit of cloud coverage, you know, that could really turn those fish on into eating up top. So we're gonna go try the other side of the tidal basin really quickly and then move along. We're gonna see if we can flip this exo stick around some of this bridge here. There we go. Yeah. Nice. There you go guys, first fish of the day. Little two pound Potomac River largemouth on the exo stick with a flicky split. Good looking fish. Well let's see. They'll hit the vile crawl over here too. Let's give this a go. So 
right now we have an incoming tide so these fish are just using this bridge basically as a break from the current they just sit behind there and wait for bait to come through and crush it there we go there's another one Oh, that's a better fish, too. Woo. He is fat. Look how fat this fish is, you guys. This is like a two pound fish, but it's probably closer to three and a half because of how fat it is. Crushed the vile crawl, just absolutely smoked it. <clears throat> All right, there you go. That was on the vile crawl. Very next cast, Texas rig. Beautiful fish. So pretty. So fat. I'm gonna let her go. Go make some big babies. But we're gonna go check out another spot before the day's over. So we're probably gonna go check out Roach's Run, but we'll decide when we get back to the car. We're the third and final spot of the day. I'm gonna take a second and retie some of these baits that I broke off at the tidal basin. I'm gonna put another Texas rig on with the vile crawl. Throwing that on a 3 odd EWG hook with a 3 8 ounce Texas rig tungsten weight. There you go, that's the vital crawl all ready to go. Throwing that on a 7 6 medium heavy rod. I'm gonna go ahead and put on another flickety split with the exo stick and just wacky rig this for a bit more. Generally, I'm gonna throw this setup on a spinning rod, but I have the twin spin on so I'm going to leave that on the spinning rod and throw this on a 6.8 medium heavy. It's on here with 15 pound fluorocarbon. It'll do the job. Alright we're going to go check one more spot and then call it a day. It's been fun. We've caught some fish. Got to fish some new baits. We're going to go check out one last spot. Do you mind if I flip a couple over here? Is that cool? Thank you. Oh, this is something big. No, it's a fish. Oh my god, this is huge. Oh, it's a huge catfish. Oh my god. Hammered it. Oh. Yeah, for sure. That thing's massive. Oh, broke me off. I figured. That was a good fight though. Oh my god, that was crazy. Whew. All right guys, good luck. I'm done for the day. Whew. Oh my god, guys, that was a really good day. We caught a couple good bass. We got to see a bunch of big gar, fish some new places, and we lost an epic battle with a giant 30 to 40 pound blue catfish, which was pretty freaking cool. Good way to end the day off. It was fun. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to check out your Facebook groups, your state's Department of Game and Inland Fisheries websites, and also never forget good old Google Maps. You can find so many cool places to fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on Mystery Tackle Box's YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next one.